Alex Sharples, Fine Line Prints and Web. How are you? Good afternoon, David. Very well indeed. Thank you. Yeah, good. Looking forward to it. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Alec. I tell people I'm a retired farmer, which I was a pig farmer for 10 years. But that really? is an awful long time. I and mean, we're talking about two or three centuries ago now. But the reason I got from pigs to prints, if you like, which is a sort of which is basically what we've done. I was heavily involved with Roundtable many years ago. Roundtable is a fundraising organization for businessmen under 40. And it's very much centers around a local level and they raise funds for local charities. I enjoyed going along to some of the area meetings. And the, I do remember one over in Bangor, the editor of the local area magazine held up a blank sheet of paper and he was very indignant about this. He said to all the members there, if all you give me is nothing, this is all I'll give you back. Of course, that was like a red rag to a bull. Nobody likes being to abused like that. So I got thinking, I thought, this is ridiculous. I mean, surely somebody can do better than that. I've had absolutely no experience in print, editing, or anything like that at the time. So I stood for the area magazine editorship, and I got it. And I forged a tie-up with a local printer at the time, and he helped me put it together and design it and print it. It grew from strength to strength. And after about nine months, I thought, oh, I'm really enjoying this. So I started up my own graphic design business. Then one thing led to another, and there was another business locally to us that was just doing print. Anyway, we joined forces, and Fine Line was born, and we're shortly to celebrate our 33rd. So when you started, there was no internet. Was digital printing even a thing? Desktop publishing was just kicking off. I remember buying an A4 screen at the time because I started off with, and it was all done in hard code. And that A4 screen cost me an absolute arm and a leg. No, there was no digital print. There was no internet. I remember email addresses when they first came along were about a million letters and numbers with CompuServe at the end. So the difference between then and which basically was wet ink printing at the time in A4 and A3 format, although we did one or two large format jobs. And now it's A4 up to AO, it's on paper, it's on plastics, it's on wood, it's on aluminium, it's on flag material. We deal with a whole range of things. When you were working with Roundtable, you hooked up with a local printer. Did you then started your own print business with your own presses? Or did you um, work with that local guy? Well, I worked with that local guy when I was just when I just had my graphic design business, and then it was probably about a year or two that had been going, and then an opportunity to tie up with a different local printer came along, and we joined forces, and so then I started printing it ourselves. So that's how that evolved. Yeah. And you got your own presses and all that, and uh, an ink, and everybody had grubby fingers and all that type of thing. Well, me personally, David, because <laughs> the person that had inky fingers that was a press operator at the time, but yeah, it really was a horrid, mucky business, and uh, lots of chemicals flying around, left, right, and centre, and of course now it's all digital, all electronic, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. seems like a million miles away. It was just that interest in printing that, that kind of got you going in the first place. It was basically print and communication, really that I enjoyed. And although I had a very satisfactory, a well, wonderful career on the family farm, I thoroughly enjoyed that. You know, prints and graphic design gave an extra dimension and it also gave me an opportunity to branch out on my own. I mean, I never thought it would end up where we are today, but that's just the way that life goes sometimes. And that was in Ruthin as well. Have you always been in the in North Wales area? Born and bred. Um, yeah, been here all my life. It, all your customers are, are local to you, or do you deal nationally? We're based in North East Wales, David, and our customer base predominantly is North East Wales. By far, the vast majority are in this local area. But we've got another side to the business, which is which got its own little sort of identity, and that's funeral stationery for you. It's all under the fine line banner, but that allows us to create online funeral stationery, and that is a UK-wide customer base. In actual fact, we've had orders going over to the States, Europe, and I think we might even have had one go to Australia. We're not a worldwide business, but 99% of it is UK. -based. I didn't know that you had that kind of online branch to the business. When did you start that? We've been printing funeral stationery for as long as the business has been going. And it was walk in trade really at the time. But you know, we were only ever able to deal with a very local business. As computer technology developed and internet technology developed, gradually we, we the, the opportunity 
to offer an online solution came about, especially with online editors becoming a little bit more sophisticated. That's allowed us, as I said, to extend our reach right the way across the country. But the reason we hived that off, David, not just, and not just produce it as another item of stationery, is that bereaved families need to be dealt with. You need to deal with them in a very sympathetic and empathetic way. There's a whole different language, a whole different approach to the customer service side with that. Now, building a brand new niche site that dealt with that allowed us to really oscillate that service and deal with it in the way that it mm-hmm. should. So that's how that happened. What sets your printing business apart from others? I think all printers like to think they're the fastest and cheapest and the best at putting ink on paper. But I mean, that's a given these days. I would say that first and foremost, we're problem solvers rather than printers. And we like to explore all the details behind a job and the drive, the main drivers for our customers before we start making any recommendations. So we're problem solvers rather than printers probably. Okay, very good. And, you know, with the change of printing and the the onset of digital and digital media, what's the value you think that print has over digital media? The value that, that, that physical print has over digital, David, is that it's what we call very sticky. It stays top of mind. I mean, don't get me wrong. We use digital and digital promotion methods, you know, as, as much as the next guy. But they're usually top of mind one second and they're very easily forgotten another time. The very nature of being a physical product, it sticks around and people don't really want to throw stuff like that away. It allows you to stay top of mind and have an ever presence on those desks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking around my desk and I've got a few items on here, which are, uh, I've been on my desk for a while from kind of business cards and placemats and all these types of things that, that just do stay around Whereas the digital assets. Well, they stay on the computer. How do you see the print business changing in the future? It was changing already, David, and has been changing for an awful long time. Printers are going to forge much closer links to their customers by helping them align um, print types, print products and print finishes much more carefully to their customers and their customer expectations than keeping the broad brushstroke of print products, if you like. So now much more careful targeting, I think, is the, is the mantra there. Yeah, and I guess in the digital age, we'd go to different experts about different sorts of digital media. So I'd go to a Facebook expert to talk about Facebook, and I'd go to, I don't know, email experts to talk about email. But print also covers a whole lot of platforms that... I think as a business, you need to work with a real expert in somebody that really can be creative around all the different ways that you can deploy print as a business to give you some more ideas. Well, David, I mean, you're absolutely right to say that, you know, you would go to the expert in the field to answer a particular question to your satisfaction. But working with printers such as Fineline, we've had such a, a wide range of experience across a whole range of fields and digital sort of interactions, if you like, with terms of print types, communication types, different distribution types. That's why you've really got to sit down and find out a lot more about the customer, their, their audience and what those drivers are before you even begin to start handing out advice. So you know, really drilling down into the detail is vitally important. What's real benefit of working with an expert printer on a particular project there's nothing worse than coming to you and they want a job in two or three days time and they've got a certain type of budget and none of the alternative recommendations that you might have been able to offer would be suitable for them at that stage so i I think yeah you can look at different lead times different cost bases different production methods and different types of prints as well, that would allow them a much better return on investment by getting involved closely at an early stage. But you can help and advise and guide. Obviously, ultimately, it's up for the customer to decide what direction they want to take. But they can listen to our advice and they can take it on board and ignore or not. Yeah. And out of interest in your business, what sort of proportion is 
let's call it marketing style printing. So printing for a marketing or a customer service aspect versus let's say operational marketing, printing things like order forms and you know, that sort of printing. I would say that about two thirds of what we do have some sort of promotional. I think what we printers forget is that you know, we are a very big part of the communications industry because everything about print communicates something about the business to the customer and vice versa, funnily enough. And I think a lot of printers forget that and they forget that at their peril because there's a hugely important and valuable lesson if you realise how important that communication traffic is and you design the piece to be able to do that as effectively as possible. So just give me an example of the, the sort of stuff that you do for the, you know, the majority of your customers. What sort of stuff are they buying from? There isn't a typical order. I mean, we do everything from business cards up to brochures and all sorts of things in between. There are menus, information cards, we do lanyards, we do feather flags for outside, we do dye bond aluminium signs, Fomex boards. We print on plastics for the defence industry, or plastic type paper, I should say, waterproof, tearproof products. There really isn't a typical example of anything. It's just, we just put ink on virtually anything to produce imagery. And how much of that do you do in-house or how much of it is, you know, using your contacts and your knowledge and your experience to get the right production machinery to do the job? Well, all printers would like to tell you, David, that they do everything in-house. Now, we would do our customers a disservice if we said that, because we would have to invest, I mean, literally millions in kits to do everything that we do. I would say about two thirds to three quarters of the business, we print material in-house. But we use a series of print partners, trade houses, to do some of the more specialist aspects. Now, what that does is it allows us to, we're not tied to a particular production system or anything like that. We can find the fastest and most cost-effective route to market for our customers and get stuff done, I think, far more reasonably and more cost-effectively than if we printed in-house. Oh, and what's the weirdest thing that you've, you've ever been involved in getting printed? Or designing for that matter. One well, of the biggest orders we've ever had and continue to have are fortune cookie slips. These are tiny little slips of paper about some 40 mil wide, about 12 mil deep. And the last order of those we did was about four, four or five million of those. And we do about 11 million a year. They're a very difficult thing to do because they have to be supplied to the food manufacturers in a randomly sorted fashion in nine different, actually, from what I remember. So the unusual, and I mean, that's completely out of the ordinary. Not many people would be doing stuff like that. How did you get involved in the fortune cookie business in the first place, Dad? Can you recall where that originated? We got involved with the fortune cookie business, David, through a very simple little old fashioned marketing ploy. I mean, we're going back a few years now, but we created little A5 jotter pads. And I mean, everybody uses jotter pads on their desks. What most printers do is they put their big name and logo on it, and they say a little bit about what they do. But what we did was we designed really colorful little jotter pads. On every page, there's a different service. So when they get a jotter pad, they see 52 or 53 things that we do. Anyway, my wife, Amanda, went round, which we had a little bit of a sales drive like that about four or five years ago. And we were just dropping these off in, in local businesses and we'd do 20 or 30 in a day. Nothing came of it for, I think, about six months. It was probably about 12 months, actually. And about 12 months after they had it, they gave us a call because they were having awful trouble with their present supplier who was going to cease doing that job. And they asked if we could help. And one thing led to another. And we now do fortune cookies. So you were using printed materials Absolutely. as part of your marketing. Do many of your customers use printed materials in their marketing? They do, David. I mean, they predominantly they use flyers like or inserts in local magazines and things like that. But I've never seen any other advertising other than that. But one of the most unusual bits of print that we've also used that's been very effective are things like lumpy mail. What we do there is we identify, I don't know, 30 or 40 top 
prospects that we'd really like to deal with in the local area. And instead of sending out a letter saying we're by far the best, cheapest and grooviest printers about, we send an item of lumpy mail and that might have something a little bit quirky inside. It'll have a little letter, it'll have a jotter pad and maybe some sweets. It might even be a box of cakes, which we've done in the past. Now, the interesting mm -hmm. thing about that is that it elevates prints into something completely different and it creates a point of difference and it creates a wow factor. And the uh, results we've had from that are phenomenal. Is that something you could offer your customers, putting together lumpy mail, or is that a bit tricky to do on a larger scale? No, it's not difficult at all. I mean, we run into problems if somebody asked us to do many hundred, because that would require a little bit of auto mail. But the small scale that we were talking about is very easily manageable. And if somebody wanted to send out a couple of hundred items, you know, we've got all the technology to do that. But I must stress, we are not a marketing agency at all. We're using ideas from people that we deal with to benefit and grow our own business. But if people want to take advantage of that for us to do for them, yes, we can. Would it be possible if people were sending you items to be dispatched on sort of onesies, twosies, threesies? Right. It might add up to a big number, but it would be, you know, maybe two one day, maybe nothing the next day, then five the next day. Is that possible or would that take a little bit of organising? Funnily enough, we're just about to do something very similar to that for the National Child Care Trust, where they've got, I mean, a lot of their staff are working remotely and they've got certificates to send to about 50 people up and down the country. So we'll be printing all the certificates for them. We'll be putting them in mailing packs, addressing them for the NCT, and we'll be posting them out as well. So we've got the means to do that. That's not a problem at all. You got the capability to have a little bit of well housing and shelving and put things together and get them out the door. Excellent. Yeah, we have. I mean, I'm not trying to boast that we've got a warehouse the size of Old Trafford or anything like that, because we haven't. But on a very small scale, it's very easy, very straightforward. Cool, very good. And I guess over the years, you've probably seen the quantity of printing declining, probably, as people have moved more digital. Is that getting a bit of a resurgence now, as people are looking for different ways of getting noticed? Goodness me, the, the way that the prints and print quantities have changed over the years is just staggering. I mean, if I look at all the, or many of the business, or the types of work that we would have dealt with 25, 30 years ago, they've nearly all gone. And the market has changed dramatically. Run lengths have reduced significantly, but the quality of work and the type of substrates that we print on has changed dramatically. And it's very much now a, a case of really niching down to your audience and business type and finding print solutions that, that resonate with those audiences. And are you able to help customers find the right piece of marketing and the right lumpy mail? I know you said you're not a marketing agency, but you've got some experience in this field. We have got a little bit of experience of our own. I think our skill set comes in helping to, first of all, sit down with customers and find out really what they're trying to do, who their audience is, what their desired outcome is for this item of um, print promotional material. And once we know the outcome, their audience type, probably a, a host of other smaller details, then we can sort of really get down into a lot of detail and help guide our customers. The problems start where the customer will come to the printer and they'll say, I want X, Y, Z and I want it in three days time. What's your price? Now, when that happens, we get virtually no opportunity to help and guide people. But if we do have the inside track and we can really sit down and talk to customers about their project, find out more about them, their customers, and what they're trying to do. That's, that's where the added value of our experience comes into play, I would say. And do you have a, you know, sort of a particular sort of customer, a particular sort of company that you would say, you know what, we could really do a good job for that sort of company and that sort of, is there anything that particularly comes to mind? Let me paint the picture of an ideal customer. It's somebody that, that's ordering three or four, maybe half a dozen times a year. We're in contact with them very regularly. We get to know them. 
they get to know us, we get to know about what they're trying to do. We hold an awful lot of digital IP, intellectual property of theirs. So we have that on hand and we can respond very quickly. It matters less what the business is, whether they're restaurants and we're doing menus and the like. It could be engineering companies where we're doing specialist material that's only done two or three times a year, for example, but it's dealing with people on a frequent basis and they get to know us, we get to know them, and that's where we can really help and guide them. Yeah, very good. And I would guess that lots of more traditional printers struggle with really getting to know customers. They may know their machines very well, but coming up with different ideas to help their customers might be a little bit challenging for them. I think our point of difference is that we've had so many years dealing with all sorts of different types of customers, different business types, different types of print, and also doing our own print promotion, that we, we can't really bring an awful lot of experience and help and know-how to the table, which they can take advantage of. Yeah, very good. So if people wanted to just talk with you and just explore that a little bit, either for marketing or for customer services, just some way of exploring a project with you, what would be the easiest way for people to get hold of you? If somebody came on the phone or dropped us an email and said, look, you know, they'd welcome the chance to sit down and talk through a project, it just might be just generally scoping it out. That, that would be absolutely wonderful for us because it allows us to get involved with them right at the beginning of the planning stage. We can help and guide them as to run lengths, lead times, finishing types, and all that sort of thing. If they're locally based, pop in. If you're a little bit further afield, Zoom calls are perfect. Yeah, okay, very good. Alec, it's been really lovely to chat with you. Thanks very much for your time. Well, thank you, David. Wonderful talking to you.